Let's bring in Jay Billis. Uh, Jay, I don't know what your nickname was in college or high school. Did you have one as a player? I had one in college. Uh, my uh, my teammates used to call me Arnold because I got so strong and big that uh, that they started calling me Schwarzenegger. <laughs> All legal, right above board. As far as you know, yeah. <laughs> I have a new nickname for you. Okay. The Moral Compass. <laughs> That's better than what I expected from you. Yeah. So I'm, I'm actually pleased by that. Or, or just you used the, to call me the mean spirit of Jay Billings. I did. I did. But but not anymore. <laughs> like maybe the compass, you know, just short for the compass. Like you're you're the one that you're you're the voice of reason here. How's that? I think most of my I think most of my friends would shorten that to the last three letters. <laughs> of, uh, All right. Uh, Jay uh, and ESPN's championship week coverage begin this week. Uh, Jay will be in Brooklyn for the ACC tournament next week calling games. If you were going to sum up what happened last week, how would you do it? Uh, leaks from the FBI investigation uh, that, uh, that showed most of what we have known for a million years in college sports, not just college basketball, but college football, that we have a black market economy because the players aren't allowed to receive more than their expenses. And, you know, Dan, I mean, I don't mean to, to come off as, as sounding nonplussed about this whole thing, but the only thing different than we've had in the past in this is that the FBI is involved. And so we are seeing this stuff with the imprimatur of, of the FBI and, and the U.S. Attorney's Office in the Southern District of New York. And, the, and somehow they are saying that this is criminal because the schools are somehow the victims in in this whole this whole multi-billion dollar enterprise i I find that kind of hard to believe but if you go back over the years like agents have been paying players forever and it's been in football and basketball and schools have been paying players forever and it's been in football and basketball so you know it's it's not a surprise it's just a surprise that the fbi is the one that that sort of is uh, is putting all this out there what kind of impact if any does it have on march madness coming up I'm not a ton. I mean, you know, and again, I'm going to sound really cynical here, but but the one thing I know for sure is no matter what comes out, we are playing all these games when they're scheduled to be played, and these contracts will all be fulfilled, and all the checks are going to clear on time. And and Dan, like this this is cynical. It's true. Uh, how many times have we heard from the NCAA that the wheels of justice in the NCAA turn really slowly, and it's like the United Nations, and it's really but boy, the tournament's coming up, and everybody got cleared in 24 hours. And, and, man, when they want to do something in a hurry, they can do it. Uh, so, you know, the, all, that, all that other stuff about the wheels of justice turning slowly or nonsense, uh, they don't want anything to mess with this tournament. And I'm not suggesting that they would allow anything illicit to go on under their nose, but, but they're going to do whatever they can to make sure that the tournament's not affected. I don't blame them for that. There's a billion dollars a year at stake. It's actually way more than a billion dollars a year, but, but the, the rights fees are at least a billion and then you've got all the ancillary rights and the other money that's changing hands. But they're not messing with this tournament. We are playing all these games. No game will be canceled because of this. Will Sean Miller be coaching when we get there? I can't imagine it, Dan. Um, I can't imagine it. And and I'm I'm one that that stuck up for Sean when the Emmanuel Book Richardson thing came out about one of his assistants that was taking money from an agent in order to steer players toward that agent. Uh, I I couldn't imagine that Sean would have known about that. Uh, and I still don't know whether he knew about it, but but being on a uh, an FBI wiretap discussing uh, discussing the payment of money to a player, uh, I I just can't imagine that he that he'd be coaching. And and you know the the player that that was in question, DeAndre Ayton, played in the game against Oregon on Saturday. Yeah. And so so if 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 Arizona and and the NCAA think okay, well there's no evidence that that and he played. You have to ask yourself, well, why didn't Sean Miller coach? Yep. Yep. You know, if there if there's innocence there, you know, look, I trust the reporting of Mark Schlaba. I trust the reporting of Pete Thamel and Pat Forty, who've reported wonderfully well on this. Uh, I trust all of their reporting. Uh, but if if somehow that their reporting, their sources are inaccurate, then why didn't Sean Miller coach? That that's that's a key question that I think a lot of Arizona supporters that, that are questioning this are, are missing. And we're talking to uh, Jay Billis, the Compass, ESPN College Basketball Analyst. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure this out. Every time that something comes up, we always think, oh, my gosh, this is the tipping point. Now, all of a sudden, there's going to be a reset button here. It doesn't feel like there's a reset button here. Where are we getting to where everybody's going to be 
more comfortable with the environment of what's going on behind the scenes in college athletics? Yeah, that's a good question, Dan. I think it's a little bit different this time because we're looking at issues of of these being federal crimes. And again, I don't don't think they are, but good luck telling a U.S. attorney uh, what's what's a crime and what's not. I mean, the theory that they're going under is that these are federally funded institutions at over ten thousand dollars, and so so these institutions, because NCAA rules are being broken, these schools are at risk of playing ineligible players and having to at risk of having to disgorge profits, and uh, and not being able to to properly marshal their assets. That being the players and the scholarships, it's really an odd theory. It's kind of like a bank defrauding its customers, like bank employees defrauding bank customers, and then the bank saying, well, we were the ones that were injured because the SEC came back and hit us with penalties. Um, it's, it's a crazy theory, but that's what they're going on. So because, the, because we got the FBI and federal, you know, federal criminal activity being an issue, I think we will, see, we will see some change in this. But the question is, like, like right now, there's a commission that Condoleezza Rice is chairing that's been looking into this and, and you know, hearing witness testimony and the like, and they're supposed to make recommendations uh, in April. Well, I mean, we don't even have our arms totally wrapped around this. And so the NCAA can do two things, in my judgment. They can double down on amateurism and say, we're going to make more rules to make it more, more restrictive or Byzantine, whatever you want to call it, and, and we're going to keep going. Or they can say... We're going to fashion our rules to reflect the, flat, the fact that this is a multi-billion dollar industry and it's professional in every way. And we're going to take our players out of, of harm's way for getting hit with federal crimes because these rules don't make any sense. You know, foot, uh, uh, hockey players and baseball players, college baseball players and college hockey players are allowed to have agents. Uh, why, why would basketball and football players not be allowed to have agents? You know that kind of thing, and they they need to they need to go in that direction to re rework the rules to make to make it reflect the fact that we're in a professional sports environment. Uh, this is not the Little League World Series where somebody's dad is coaching the team while he's selling insurance on the side. You know th- th- this is big money sports, and everybody knows it. And the fact that all these players are being paid right now, people say, well, if we opened it up and allowed the players to be paid, it'd be the wild wild west. No, actually, it would be a free market, orderly, contract-driven system. We have the wild, wild west now. Uh, that, that's the way I look at it. Explain how this – we've gotten to this point in how you pay a player. What was it like in the 70s or 80s, your best knowledge, and then where we are now? Because, you know, there are coaches who don't know – if somebody's being paid, if an agent gets to the family right away in high school or the, the player, the coach may not know unless the player, you know, tells him. But the 80s, 90s and where we are now and how uh, players get paid, got paid. It was it, it was uh, it was different, but the same in a way. I mean, the, 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 we, we joke now about, you know, the 70s and 80s were the good old days of cheating where the player actually got the money. <laughs> um, you know, now, now it's people who are, are, are brokering the player, but in the 70s, you know, 60s, 70s and 80s, uh, it was more booster activity. You had agents involved. Uh, there were players that would sell their, you know, they'd sell their tickets. Uh, they would, they would use tickets to barter for, uh, maybe getting a, a good deal on a, on a car from a local car dealer, things like that. You had stuff, all that kind of stuff that went on, but it, it's kind of, it's kind of funny to hear people talk like, you know, UCLA and you remember in the sixties and seventies, Sam Gilbert was their big booster that was, that was providing extra benefits to all the players. That's a known thing. And the NCAA knew it. They just wouldn't do anything about it. Uh, You know, you remember what happened at SMU with football, all that stuff went on. Now it's more in the, in the agent realm. Uh, You've got stuff going on. There's some shoe company involvement, but it's not as, I don't think it's as big as, as some people think. Uh, and then there's the AAU circuit where they're able to funnel money through through AAU programs, and just like uh, like money was funneled through uh, through nonprofit churches and the Cam Newton thing, you know the idea that this doesn't go on in football. And I know football people go, "Hey, don't look at us!" I mean, but come on now, like if, if the FBI weren't involved, Dan, uh, basketball would be saying the same thing that football is saying right now. Is they'd be saying it's not as widespread. Come on, it's not. It, 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 of course, a few people cheat, but it's not widespread. If you got uh, paid, you would you tell me? Of course not. Why, why would anybody do that? Um, it was a, it, you know back then. It was a totally different time. I mean, we all knew people. That there were you, you knew the stories too, Dan. You were in school at the same time I was. So uh, there was a story of an SEC player that uh, that they had set up coke machines for the guy. 
So he had a key to the Coke machine. He would go and open the Coke, all the Coke machines and take all the money out. And uh, there was all kinds of stuff going on back then. And, and we think those stories now are cute and funny. Yeah. And some of, the, some of the old-time coaches that are out on the speaking circuits, they all talk about, they, they all make jokes about it. Um, but it's a different time now. And, and people aren't, uh, you know, like Sean Miller, like this stuff, this stuff has been going on forever. And the NCAA knows it has been going on forever. They just couldn't. It's like, uh, it's like insider trading or, or something like that. You know, you know, it's going on or mortgage fraud, you know, it's going on. You don't know exactly who's doing it. And, uh, and, but the FBI now is showing us exactly who's doing it with regard to one agent. This is just Andy Miller. It's just his agency. Um, there are a bunch of other agents out there. And, uh, and so the idea that this is, is not going on in football, basketball, and the like, of course it is. Of course it is. There's too much money. You know, we can't have a multi-billion dollar industry and say the players can only have their expenses and expect that it's going to stop there. It's not. And, uh, and it would be a pipe dream to pretend that it would. And, and the NCAA – like kind of looks at this like, wait a minute, you know, this is, this is a pristine thing. And, <laughs> and come on, man. I mean, you guys signed all these contracts. You guys brought all this money into it. You guys signed with the shoe companies, not the players. You did this. You're using the players as billboards. And then you want to say, wait a minute, how did this become, where's all this money grabbing coming from? I can't believe these greedy players want more than a scholarship. It's crazy. If I was offered money in college, I would tell everybody that I was offered money. If you were offered money, what do you mean? Oh, you, you mean now? Yeah, uh, that would mean I'm a good player if I got, like, I had to pay money, Jay. I, I didn't get offered money, so that's, you know, that's why. I mean, you. Well, that's, that's the difference between you and me, Dan. You got paid and you were worth it. No, I did not oh, get paid. Oh, you didn't get paid. I wish I, I, wish I had gotten paid. <laughs> oh, okay. But, but I will tell you this, that I don't know, I don't know any good player. I don't know any good player that was strictly eligible in, in, in any era, you cannot live by these rules because it what it does is it makes normal human behavior illegal. You cannot do it. And there, there's there's no player that ever played in, in college that did not take a free meal, that did not take something that would technically make that player ineligible. Now, they may have to pay back a, a, a little bit of money and then could regain their eligibility. But as a technical matter, I don't know any any good player. That, that, that's strictly eligible. He's the moral compass. The compass, for sure. Uh, Jay, Bills. Jay, thank you, as always, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to catch up and actually talk basketball come uh, tournament time. Always a pleasure, Dan, if I'm not indicted by them. <laughs> thank you, Jay. Uh, Jay Billis, ESPN College Basketball Analyst. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.